Hello everyone, so today I'll be looking at improving the accuracy of eyewitness testimony cognitive interview. As always, I'll be following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A level year one and AS with the green haired girl on. So things you need to know and be able to recognise, I've just included your AQA specification point here. So improving the accuracy of eyewitness testimony, including the use of the cognitive interview. So the cognitive interview, what is it? You might be asked to explain what it is, outline what it is. So it is a method of interviewing eyewitnesses to help them retrieve more accurate memories. So it uses four main techniques, and these are all based on well-established psychological knowledge of human memory. So these techniques are report everything, reinstate the context, reverse the order and change perspective. And the cognitive interview was put forward by Fisher and Geiselman in 1992. And eyewitness testimony could be improved if the police use better techniques when interviewing witnesses, that is their argument. So we've got the different techniques that we're going to look at. We've got report everything, firstly. So witnesses are encouraged to put every single detail that they can remember of the event, even if something doesn't really seem that relevant, they just report everything, and even if they don't feel that confident about it. So details eyewitnesses don't think are important may trigger further memories, and so that is why they're encouraged to report everything. The second one is reinstate the context. So the interviewer encourages the witness to mentally recreate the image of the incident in their mind, including details of the environment, so the weather conditions, other people that were there, and the individual's emotional state, including their feelings at the time of the incident. And this is related to our context-dependent forgetting. The third technique is reverse the order. So the witness is asked to recall the incident in a different chronological order to the original sequence. For example, from the final point backwards. And this is much more difficult to do, and it prevents people reporting their expectations of how the event must have happened rather than the actual events. And what it does is it prevents dishonesty. And it's much harder to produce an untruthful account if they have to reverse it. And the fourth one is change the perspective. So the witness should recall the incident from other people's perspectives. So the witness may be asked to report it from the perpetrator or somebody else who was present. So they recreate the situation from different points of view, describing what another witness present at the scene would or the perpetrator. So this is done to disrupt the effects of expectations and schema, so your mental packages of information on recall, because schema can generate expectations of what may have happened rather than what really did happen. We've also got something called the Enhanced Cognitive Interview. So this is Fisher et al, 1987. So Fisher added additional elements to the cognitive interview. And these were that you have to focus on social dynamics of the interaction between the witness and the interviewer. So the interviewer needs to know when to establish eye contact. The interviewer should not distract the witness with unnecessary interruptions. The witness controls the flow of information. Interviewer is asking open ended questions and the witness is asked to speak slowly. And we also have to remind witnesses not to guess and to use the I don't know option when necessary. We are trying to improve the accuracy here with this enhanced cognitive interview. And we need to make sure that the witness is feeling comfortable, they're relaxed and they've got reduced anxiety. They're not nervous, not in an anxious state. So we'll now look at our evaluation. So the first limitation we have is that the cognitive interview is time consuming. So the police may not use the cognitive interview simply because it is time consuming. They may be reluctant to do it. It takes much more time than the standard police interview and more time is needed to, to establish rapport between the witness and the interviewer. So the cognitive interview requires specialist training as well and many forces have not taken upon it to provide that training. They've only given a couple of hours because it is very time consuming. So it's unlikely therefore that the proper version of the cognitive interview is actually used, which may explain why the police have not been that impressed by it. 
So we do now have a strength. Some elements may be more valuable than others. Now Milne and Ball, 2002, found that all the elements were valuable in some way. So each element does in fact produce more information than the standard police interview does. But what they argue is that the combination of report everything and reinstate the context produces the best recall compared to any of the other conditions alone or mixing others together. So this confirms police officers' suspicions that some aspects of the cognitive interview are more useful than others. And it is a strength because it suggests that at least two elements should be used to improve police interviewing. And it increases the credibility of the cognitive interview amongst those who use it. A further strength is support for the effectiveness of the enhanced cognitive interview. Now, the enhanced cognitive interview offers special benefits. So a meta-analysis, which is where you combine lots and lots of studies all together and then analyse them, by Konkin et al, 1999, combining 50 studies, found that the enhanced cognitive interview consistently provided more correct information than the standard interview used by the police. And this is a strength because it suggests there are real practical benefits to the police of using the enhanced cognitive interview. And research shows it gives police a greater chance of catching and charging criminals. So as a whole, this is very beneficial to society to utilise the enhanced cognitive interview. A limitation is that there are variations of the cognitive interview which are used. So if a research study evaluates the effectiveness of one version of the cognitive interview, the findings may not apply when different police force uses it. So this makes it difficult to compare the ways the cognitive interview is used. It also makes it easier for police interviewers to reject it because they could argue it will never work here. So if it's difficult to compare, the police interviewers then may reject it entirely because some people may choose to use two parts of the cognitive interview. Some people may use one, some forces may not use any, and some may use all of it. So it's very easy for police interviewers to reject it because they, they might think, oh, well, it's not going to work in our police force anyway. But on balance, what we can say is that the variation that is used is probably a good thing because a strength of this cognitive interview is it's very flexible and it can be adapted to different circumstances and different cases. A final limitation is that the cognitive interview creates an increase in inaccurate information. So the cognitive interview is aiming to increase the amount of correct information remembered by eyewitnesses, but the recall of incorrect information may also be increased. So Konkin et al, 1999, found an 81% increase in correct information. So that's good but also a 61% increase of incorrect information. So that's false positive. So that's where the person reporting it believes they're giving correct information, but they're not. When that enhanced cognitive interview was used compared to a standard interview. But what we can say is it's not a good idea to in abandon the cognitive interview entirely as the fact that it did lead to an increase in that inaccurate recall is a good reason to find ways of improving it. So the cognitive interview does produce more accurate recall as well and that outweighs any increase in inaccurate information. So I've just had a look at the past papers available to you. I found this one on AS paper one from June 2018. Outline techniques used in the cognitive interview and discuss the effects of these techniques on the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. This tricked a lot of students, this style of question. So you've got to outline the techniques used in the cognitive interview. So that's your AO1. You've just got to outline the techniques, which should be, I hope, fairly straightforward. But this book, Discuss the Effectiveness of These Techniques on the Accuracy of Eyewitness Testimony, that is evaluation. This is a four and four split, so four for AO1, four for AO3. So I've just got the different levels for you here. If you look at level two, you will see that's three to four marks. That is all you can get if you just talk about AO1. So if you wrote loads about AO1 and didn't actually then go on to discuss on the rest of the question, you are limiting yourself to full marks 
despite however much you write, you can only get four for LO1. So make sure you're really looking at that question and what it's wanting from you. If you look higher up in level three and four, you will notice that three, the answer is mostly clear and organized and level four, the answer is clear and coherent. It's got to be very precise. And you'll also see that level three has some occasional inaccuracies. So you can make a few little mistakes in there, whereas level four, it's got to be more accurate. So here's your possible content. You'll notice each of the four different points there. You should make one for each and that will get you a mark and your possible discussion point here. Credit also features of the enhanced cognitive interview, so relaxing, speaking slowly, and candidates can achieve up to four marks by either outlining two techniques in some detail or by covering more than two in less detail. So that's important to realise as well. You don't have to mention all four of the techniques. And then you've got your discussion points there. Limitations, usefulness of the cognitive interview with children, less useful when there is increased time between event and recall. So just really try and think of different ones that you can pick out and bring in there. You've got your Conkenatel there, and you've also got Milne and Bull, which we've been talking about. Another question that we can have a look at is the A-level paper one from June 2018. So this is describe the cognitive interview for six marks. This is fairly nice, a nice sort of question. It's all AO1 marks, it's all description. So it's just outlining the different steps, the four different points. You can even include the enhanced cognitive interview there. So here's your possible content that you can include, knowledge of the cognitive interview. So you've got your four different ones there and also that enhanced cognitive interview, which I just mentioned. At the bottom, it's just simply listing aspects of the cognitive interview. So saying the different four things and then the enhanced cognitive interview, there's a maximum of two marks. You've got to describe what those are and state with giving some examples potentially, for example, with that enhanced cognitive interview using open-ended questions and slow speech reducing anxiety okay thank you for listening and best of luck with the rest of your revision